Hi everyone, Professor Hank here, and today we're going to talk about structures and functions. We're going to see how you can pass members of structures as arguments to functions, and we'll see how you can pass structures themselves as arguments to functions by value and also by reference. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start off with, let's go ahead and declare a structure here. We'll give it a tag of circle, and we'll give it a couple of members. So we'll have one member called area for storing the area of a circle, and then we'll have another member called radius for storing the radius of a circle. Okay, so let us say then that we have a function, we'll define a function, called uh, find area okay so for find area what we'll do is we will pass the radius of a circle okay as an argument and then um, find that area which is going to be um, pi r squared right so we'll use 3.14159 as an approximation for pi 3.14159 so Calculate the area, which is pi r squared times r times r, and then we'll return the area. Okay, so we've got our find area function. So then what we could do is, is we could create or we could define a variable of type circle and we'll assign to it a radius. Okay, and that radius will be uh, 1.2. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll call find area and we'll pass as an argument to find area the member, right, the radius member of circle. So we can do that. We can say C dot radius. Okay, why can we do that? Because a radius, even though it's a member of struct circle, it's still a double. So we can pass that double as an argument to a function that accepts doubles um, as an argument. So we can do that. So that 1.2 is going to be copied into R, right? And then um, our function is going to multiply pi times r times r and then return that. So we can then assign that to our circle structures area member and then we can print those things out. So we could do something like this. You know, radius equals c dot radius and we can do area equals c dot area. All right, just so we can prove to ourselves that it works just fine. So let's go ahead and build that and run that. Okay, so you can see there's the radius and then there is the area. So members of structures can be passed as arguments to functions. That's the, the big idea, the big idea here. Okay, now um, it can be useful to pass structures as arguments to functions. All right, so you can create a function that will accept as an argument a structure. So let's create a function that is going to be responsible for printing out the contents of a circle structure. Okay, so this will just basically do the same thing that we just did here, right? So we can say, you know, radius and um, the area. Okay, so we'll just put that in here. And now what will happen is, is we can call our print function and we can pass a circle structure as an argument, right? So this is going to accept a circle structure as an argument. And this is by value, right? Or also known as by copy, right? So this is passed by value, passed by copy. So what we can then do is we can do something like this. We can say um, print and pass it to circle C. Okay. Now just pointing out, just reminding you that the fact that I named my parameter the same thing as the variable coincidence, they can be named completely different things and that's just fine. So as a matter of fact, I think I'm going to do that just to uh, remind you that that is the case. So what's going to happen when we call this print function is the contents of this circle variable are going to be copied to this parameter just like if it was a regular old int variable or a regular old double variable 
right? Same kind of things can happen. The 1.2 will be copied into this parameter's radius member. And then the area, which was what, four point something, will be copied into the parameters area member. And so then we will print out the contents of the parameter. So let us see that just so you can see that it does work. So that is pass by copy. All right. Now we can also pass structures as arguments by, um, by reference. Okay. So let us pass, let's do pass by reference. Okay. So, um, how about we create a function called, um, fill circle or something, right? And we'll pass to the function a circle, right? So that makes it pass by reference. Okay. So then what we can do here is we can say, you know, uh, enter the uh, radius. Okay. And then we'll ask the user for the radius. Okay. And then we'll, uh, store it in a local variable, which I'll call, um, rad for radius okay so double rad okay and then we'll assign to the circles radius member whatever was entered in by the user okay so now let us replace this with a call to our function fill circle and we'll pass c as an argument and as a matter of fact we'll even have fill circle, calculate the area. Okay. By calling find area. Okay. We can do that right there. Okay. Uh, R dot radius. We could do that or we could just pass rad right there. Okay. But I'm going to do R dot radius. Okay. So we've got our fill circle. And we can grow this now since fill circle is going to be calling find area. And then we can print our circle. So let's do that. Okay. So enter the radius. So we'll do 1.3 this time. You can see there's the radius. There is our area and we're good to go. Okay. Now, uh, remember this works because whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument, right? So, when we assigned rad to r dot radius, we were actually assigning rad to c dot radius because with pass by reference, whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument. So if that's the case, then I can take out this intermediate step here, right? I could just turn around and assign whatever the user entered straight to the radius member of the circle argument. Okay. So similar to what we did here, right? It's just that the, the area is coming from the find area function rather than from the user. So I'm just reading straight into circle C via the reference parameter. So you're going to see that it's going to work um, just the same. So we'll do 1.4 this time, right? So yeah, you can do that as well. Now the Pass by reference here has other uses as well, right? So um, when you do a pass by value, right? So when I do my print function here, okay? Remember I explained to you that what was happening was that the contents of circle C were copied into this parameter, circle E, right? So we had to copy the radius and we had to copy the area from you know, C's radius and area into E's radius and area. Well, as you can imagine, that could be slow. I mean, if you've got a structure that is incredibly large, right? That has a lot of data, this can slow your program down. Now, if you pass by reference, you're not copying everything anymore. All you're doing when you use a reference parameter is you're copying the memory address of the argument. And in that way, the function can update the argument, right? Whatever you do to the parameter, you do to the argument when it's passed by reference. Okay. So if we wanted to increase the performance of say our print function, then we could make this pass by reference. 
Okay, and when we do that, it's going to work just fine. Right, you're going to see that nothing's really changed except for this is more efficient because the only thing that was copied was the memory address of the argument, not the argument itself. All right, so that's great, but there's one potential problem here, right? So the print function has no business modifying its argument, right? And pass by reference allows you to do that. You could come in here and say e dot area equals 99 and completely screw everything up, okay? Since this function print shouldn't be able to do that because all it's doing is displaying the contents, we should try to limit that. So how can we limit that? What we can do is we can make this a constant reference. Okay, so if we make it a constant reference, that means that you can no longer update the argument, right? So now that this is constant, you can no longer do something like this. You can't say e.area equals 88, right? So you got the red squiggles there. It gives you um, an error, it's, right, it's not gonna compile. So in this way, you gain the efficiency of doing pass by reference, but you also observe the principle of least privilege, which states that you only give something the ability to do something if it actually needs it. And the print function does not need to modify its argument. It just, that's not its purpose. So let's take away the ability to do it at all. It's kind of like preemptive debugging, right? Um, you can't accidentally change the argument from within the print function anymore. And you're gonna see that it works, you know, just fine. It works just the same, 1.5, and everything is great. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you're a student of mine, you have questions about any of the topics that were covered in this video, feel free to drop me an email, stop by my office hours, or hit me up on Zoom online. For the rest of you, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down button as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. You can subscribe, you can join as a member with additional perks for as little as 99 cents. Leave a comment, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.